presentation that will take about five minutes. The point of this presentation is not to teach C++. If we wanted to do that, it would take at least this full day. What we're really working on here is there are going to be some differences between what, how you code this year and how you code last year. And I kind of want to show you a few of those things before we get into the actual C++ programming session that uh, Lee and Pat will be running. So, we've been programming in C for the last few years, and I'm sorry for people easy C in that. Um, this probably won't be too applicable. But if you were programming in C before, C is a general programming language. It's a procedural language. And what it really is is a collection of variables and procedures. And it, that allows you to reuse sections of code. But even though we break our code up into several different files, in the end, it kind of all just gets mashed together into one large thing. And there's no real privacy that happens with it. If I have a variable in one file, somebody else can mess with that variable. And we do this all the time when we go pwm01 equals 127. We're taking a variable from a different file and setting its value. And um, so it's all just kind of thrown together. We break it up into files because we don't like looking through files that are a thousand lines long. So breaking it up makes life easier for us, but the computer really doesn't care. With C++, it's built on top of using C and it added a concept called classes. So a class is some data and some variables and methods that act on that data. So it is the idea we want to start encapsulating pieces of the program. So we've got a whole bunch of procedures in our, our old code. And what we would do is we'd say, okay, there are a bunch of procedures and variables in that that all refer, have to do with the camera. So we take all that stuff for the camera and we put it into one thing called a class. And if I want to know anything about the camera, I go and I ask that thing, I go, hey, what's the camera looking at right now? Can you see anything? Can you not? And we let that one thing take care of all the camera stuff. If I want to know about the camera, I go ask it. If I want to tell it to look for something else, I go tell it to do that. But it's a separate entity unto itself, and it handles that stuff. And we've got another separate one that handles a joystick input. That's its own class as well. So you get all these little tiny things all working together and interacting, but they each contain their stuff. I can't manually go in and play around with the variables in the camera class. If I wanted to change the color it's looking for, I can't go modify its hue. I have to ask it very nicely to go deal with its hue. Um, yeah? You, you can. Um, we're keeping this very basic, and I'm a little sorry for the, the C++ gurus out there are probably cringing and thinking he's lying to everyone. But um, the, the purpose of what I'm trying to do today is to just let everyone kind of be okay with classes and others. But, but you're right, you can override. Um, I, I'm a Java guy myself, but I don't believe when you override you can get the private members back. Yeah, so just like Java, if it's a private thing in one, you've got to ask. Um, but so that's our main idea. And I like to think about this like an assembly line, that we don't have one worker on assembly line that does everything all the way down the line. We have different people with specialized jobs that do their part and only their part. And we might have to tell them to go do their part, but they'll go do it then, okay? I don't necessarily worry about the person installing a headlight. That's not my job, I'm installing a vendor. Okay, so we, we break our code up like that, and it helps us deal with a small chunk at once and makes it a lot easier for us to isolate something and make sure we get it right instead of trying to incorporate it all into the bigger picture right off the bat. Now, so we, we go and we, start programming and we write a thing called a class. And a class is kind of the specification of what that camera should do. And then what we do is we actually make one of them, or more than one of them. So I actually go and we think of the class is like the blueprint, and we say, okay, well here's how you would make a camera class. And then we use that and we make things called instances of it. And these are called objects. So you'll see these words float around a lot, but that's the real distinction between them. The class is the specification of how to do it, the object is the real thing you create and do it. So you may, maybe make one blueprint, and then you make 100 houses in a row that all look exactly the same. They're all that same blueprint, but each one is a separate instance of that blueprint. Okay? Um, with C++, a lot like C, we generally break the code up into .h and .cpb files. You don't have to do this, but it's highly recommended to keep you from ripping out whatever hair you have left after programming robots for a while. Um, then. Um, so the .h file is mainly saying, 
here's the stuff this, this class can do. Here's a list of the variables it has in it. Here's a list of the methods that you can call to either ask it things or tell it things. But then it's in the .cdp file that you actually go and tell it how it's going to do those things, the actual guts of the code. So one's kind of just like definitions of the things it should be able to do. One of them saying, well, here's how you really do it, okay? Um, C++ does not require that you name the classes the same as the things in the classes. Um, Java does, so I always do. I've been brainwashed into it, but I, it's a smart thing to do. No? All right, don't do it then. Um, the, the big thing that's going to come up here, and this is where C++ people are really going to cringe, and I made them cringe last night a bit, but there is more than one way to actually make an object and refer to that object. What we really care about for the purpose of the code we're going to generate today is having pointers to objects. So what I'm doing here, um, you'll see this nice little star in here, and we've seen things like int x equals seven before. And when you make x, x really hold, like is a little slot that holds that seven in it. What we're doing here is somewhere out in memory, I'm making my object. So I said, okay, I go get my class blueprint, I make the object, I take that thing and I throw it somewhere down in memory that's not actually in my variable. What my variable is with this setup is a pointer to say where it is. So I make the thing, I throw it somewhere in memory, and what I really am as the variable is just a pointer. I just kind of stand there and go like this. That's my job. So if anyone actually wants to do something with the object, I'll tell them where it is, but it's somewhere else in memory. For the purpose of what we're going to be doing, that's not going to be a huge deal, but I just want you to be aware when you see our code that that's why we're, we're making this somewhere in memory and the star means that what my variable is isn't that actual thing, it's a pointer to where that thing is. And yes, there are other, other ways to do it by reference, keep it on the stack. If you want to explore this later, we can talk about it after, but for what we're doing today, this should get you by. Um, here's a, a quick little example of making a class. My .h file over here says what the class name is going to be, and it has this private and public section. And the private section is all of my actual, well, this anything I don't want anyone else to be able to get directly at. I have this counter here, I want access to the counter, but if he wants to access the counter, he's going to ask me very nicely to do it. I'm not going to let him just change the value to 53. He's going to have to ask me, and there's only certain ways I'm going to allow him to change it. You can also put methods in here where if you have things that help with your inner working but you don't want someone externally calling, that should all go in the private section. The public section is all the stuff that people can ask me. The first one here is um, called our constructor. And every class should have something like this where you're saying, when you make me, when I go on this slide, new my class, that's calling this constructor method and it always matches the class name and you can give it some information. So in this case, I'm going to give it an initial value to start at. And then I have some methods here that are things that people can actually ask me or tell me to do. So in this case, I have one that lets them increment or decrement my value. This void here means that I don't return anything back. You tell me to do something, I go do it, that's it. This int down here on the get method means you're asking me for something and I'm giving you back an integer value. So. The number, or sorry, the not a number. The word at the front here is your return type. What information you're getting back from it? Void means nothing's coming back. And anything in brackets here are your parameters, information you're giving. So when I say set the value, I have to tell them what to set it to. Then in the CPP class over here, um, first thing is you need to include your header to say, all right, give me all that definition information. And beyond that, um, you'll see this because they don't require that naming convention of having counter.cpp be the file for it, you could actually do a lot of, like, you could put four different classes implementations in one file. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. And putting this, the my class colon colon, oh, that should be counter. I missed a few of them. Sorry, this should be counter dot colon colon get, meaning in the counter class, the get method, this is what it's going to do, and it's just going to return its counter. But it's that breakdown of definition of what you do, to actual implementation, for it. Um, the other thing you're going to see us do is calling methods. So you make these objects, and I said you can ask or tell them to do stuff. The way you do that is with these little arrows here. So I take my pointer, I put this arrow in,